What is compaction? Compaction is reduction of the amount of air in soil. Compaction increases the load carrying capacity of the soil. Needless to say, compaction is the most important part of foundations for building. Whether building a building or a road, the load carrying capacity of the soil is derived by compaction. Hi, I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skeel, and I'm here with another episode of Toy Talk. Today, I have two Diecast Masters 164th Scale Cat CB13 Tandem Vibratory Roller Compactors. You can buy them while supplies last with a link down below. There are various types of equipment available to perform compaction that range from small handheld sticks to handheld metal tampers all the way up to large machines. Before the age of the steam, man had to use handheld tools and animal power to compact the soil for roads and building foundations. But with the advent of steam engines, foundations became easier and better to compact. For road building, steam powered machines were employed to rough dig the roadbed, then steam rollers were employed to compact the soil. I found the history of steam rollers fascinating. A steam roller, or road roller as they are also known, are heavy duty construction vehicles used for making of roads. Steam road rollers differ from steam traction engines with road rollers having both rear driving wheels flat and smooth. Secondly, the front rollers were two drums held together as one piece within a frame. The frame was held on by one pivot point, which made the roller take all of the weight of the engine on the front. The roller on the front was, of course, how the name of the vehicle came about. The road roller was first demonstrated in France by Louis Le Mans in 1860, followed in 1863 by William Clark and his partner W.F. Batho in Britain. Competition led to innovation. During this period, Several companies were competing to produce the best steamrollers. Manufacturers such as Marshall, Wallace and Stevens, John Fowler and Company, and others. In 1862, Thomas Aveling and Richard Thomas Porter entered partnership in Kent and founded the company Aveling and Porter. Three years later, the pair produced their first steam engine and went on to produce other different types, sizes, and varieties for the market. Aveling and Porter owned the market for road rollers. In 1867, the steam road roller was patented and the company began production of the first practical steam roller. Steam rollers were used everywhere around the world. In fact, Many steamrollers were used right up until the 1960s. The majority of the rollers were of the same basic three-roll configuration, gear-driven with two large smooth wheels at the back and a single wide roll at the front. Actually, the wide roll usually consisted of two narrower rolls on the same axle to make steering easier. However, there was also a distinctive variant, the tandem, which had two wide rolls, one front and one rear. The steam powered road roller was replaced by gasoline and diesel power. The road roller only used their weight to compact the soil. Now there is another added dimension to the road roller and that is vibration. Enter the vibratory roller. The vibratory compactor comes in many sizes from small 
walk behind to the large versions. Diecast Masters made a 64th scale replica of the CB13 Cat Tandem Vibratory Roller, which is a 13 ton unit. This unit combines static and dynamic forces to increase the load bearing capacity of the surface. The process of densification is carried by transferring vibrations to the surface. The wheel of the vibratory rollers can fully cover the area underneath them. This type of roller is more efficient than the other types of rollers for compaction purposes. While moving the vibratory roller in a reverse direction, vibrations are turned off. This is done particularly to avoid disturbing the compaction of an already compacted area. How does a vibratory roller work? The vibration of the vibratory road roller is obtained through weights which are attached to the shaft inside the motor. The motor itself is located inside the drum. This is getting complicated, so I'd better just go on and show you. Here is an animated picture of the inside of the drums. The roller is operated by the driver sitting in the main cabin. All the steering controls are provided there. The engine can be located either at the front or the rear end of the roller. That's it in a nutshell. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Now for the product review. And here we go guys. This is the CAT CB13 Tandem Vibratory Roller in 164 scale in die cast metal by die cast masters. The one over here is the tandem roller with ROPS and the one over here is the tandem roller with cab. The operator station is actually the only difference between the two models so I'm putting them together. The one with ROPS is item number 85630 and the one with the cab is item number 85631. Both are available while supplies last on my website. Now, I'm going to start off with the one with the ROPS because it is the lower item number. Now, you can see it is a die cast body and it has die cast roller drums. Those are really nice. It's smooth, cold. It does have some plastic like parts of the cabin. Parts of it are metal and parts of it are plastic and these pieces that hold the drums on, but I'd say it's probably eh, probably 60 to 70% uh, die cast with some plastic. You got to expect some plastic, especially at this price point. It has the CAT CB13 logo there, warning logos, and you do, those warning logos are important because these things are articulated steering. It has the structure here for the drum rollers and the outside parts that for the motors. Now it doesn't have any true vibration, but it does have good free rolling rollers front and rear. It rolls great. Up a little bit, major difference is this has the three post ROPS and it has a canopy on top. There's also a little satellite beacon there for the operator's compartment. There's a seat and the controls, the little dashboard, just like the real one would have. And it's all painted gray and black with the black top. Up higher, you got a tank here and a tank here for weight. The engine presumably is under there because that's where the biggest place to put the motor is. They can be either on the front unit half or the back half. It's really irrelevant. Some just depends on where the manufacturer wants to make it. And the bottom line is it doesn't really matter because these machines run both directions most of the time. Turning them around is just not practical. Back here, you can see the metallic paint they used on the drum roller to make it look like a real one. The real metal that they are. Lights, cat logo, scraper bar, and a little washer, which helps when they're running asphalt. Keeps the uh, drums cool. Over on this side, you can see the parts of the drum. And you can see the hand railing. The other side has the ladder to climb in. This just has hand railing to keep you from falling out. Now on the real one, the seat would rotate, but this one doesn't. More warning signs and another CAT CB13 logo. 
rounded. What they've got is the front because of the seat. More lights, cat logo up there would be over the engine. And there is that other tank over the wheels. Very similar to the other side. Underneath, you've got the item number Tampo there, another number. Then you've got die cast masters, made in China, and 164 scale cast into the body. Also down here, you can see it has the articulated steering, so it steers. Also, you can see this thing has a little bit of crab steer, just a little bit so that you can put the back roller off set. Now, the pistons don't really work, but they're cast in to make it kind of look like it. They did a really nice job, especially for this price point. Now, let's look at the other one. All of the details on this one are the same as the other one, except for the operator's compartment. You've got your ladder to climb up, just like the other one. Only here, you've got a door. It has some bars across of it, and it has a solid top. And this one also has hard plastic windows. You can see them right there. The operator's seat, dashboard, that's all the same. But there's no rear post for the ROPS, just the cab. It has really nice glass, angled pieces, and all to go right around it. Now, the other side, there's no door, but it has the bars and everything else. Underneath, same details except for it has this one's item number instead of the other item number. But everything else is the same. Really and truly, that's why they came out with both at the same time. All they did was change the cover over the operator's compartment from the ROPS on the other one to the cab and windows on this one. And that's really the only difference on the real ones too is the operator center cab. But a lot of guys like to have either an open station with ROPS so that the guy is safe if it rolls over and it gives them some shade. And then other guys like the full cab with air conditioning and everything else. Personally, for my construction crews, I'd buy the full cabs, but I understand why it's actually easier communications without the full cab. Just the preference of the owner. Now, this is the Diecast Masters 164 scale diecast metal CAT CB13 tandem vibratory drum rollers, one with a canopy and three post drops, and the other with a full enclosed cab with windows. Great additions for your collection or your diorama. Perfect for building that new road. Today, Caterpillar makes a wide range of rollers, including the CB13 tandem vibratory roller that Diecast Masters made replicas of in 1 64th scale. You can buy each of the ones I reviewed with the links down below. Buy one now while supplies last. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please smash that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell to make sure you don't miss another episode of Toy Talk. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skeel, and I'll be back soon with another episode.